this particular project, the underground, it's it, like the grade is pretty flat um, for this site. Okay. But I can show you how I would, how you could apply an elevation change in the event that um, there was a significant grade change. Like you're, you're talking about, you know, 30, 40 feet. Um, yeah. I can, I can show you how to make that adjustment, but it's, it's, um, it's important that we have the underground drawn in the appropriate direction. So the start point and end point of the underground pipe segment become critical mm -hmm. for applying the appropriate elevation change. Okay, so let me just update my view here really fast so my colors come through correctly. Better. Okay, so generally what I've done in the past for underground, I don't like drawing all my underground. I, you know, this is incredibly extensive. This thing looped around this building, hit a couple of different hydrants. Um, it, it was a water model provided by the water department, and I didn't feel like drawing all of that. It, it was too time consuming. So instead, what I did um, in the properties of this piece of pipe, I overrode the length. I said, okay, instead of this calculating as seven foot eight and a half, I want to calculate it as 200 feet. And I want to add all of these fittings and valves. And there was a significant number of them. The one thing that I didn't do, I did not override the elevation change. So this is where you would tell the program to um, gain or lose elevation relative to the start point of this piece of pipe. Okay. So this is where the direction of this pipe, the way the direction that this, the underground pipe is drawn is critical. So the start point here, basically what I'm doing here is I'm telling the program that I'm gaining six feet from the start point to the end point of this pipe segment across 200 feet. So when the program calculates this segment of pipe, it's going to show that there is a six foot elevation gain. Mm -hmm. um, now, yeah, gain or loss relative positive six feet. I'm telling the program to gain six feet from the start point to the end point. So then in my hydraulic calculations, I would lose pressure for that elevation gain versus a negative pressure where, where this is sloping downhill. Mm -hmm. I would be gaining pressure in my hydraulic calculations. So this is where you can change that. But again, it's important to be aware of, of the start point of the pipe segment. Um, right. And then also you obviously want to include the total distance um, because it'll the program will basically spread out this elevation loss across this distance. So it's going to calculate frictional resistance for this length plus any fittings that you add to it. And then in addition to, to those two, the frictional resistance, it will apply an elevation loss or gain as appropriate based on this value as well. So when you uh, added in those fittings there, did you have to run auto fittings first and on the underground or how did you determine all those fittings? So what I did, let me open another drawing really fast so you can see. Um, I manually added those fittings. I told the program to add, you know, 12 elbows and then each elbow I specified what, what angles of degree um, that fitting was. So this is the underground that I basically, I, I, I modeled this without having to draw all of it. So I have all of these different offsets, these gate valves, this T turn loss, T run, which I didn't, I'm not even sure I included the T run loss, but a couple more 45s, another T, some more 45s, another gate valve, T, some more Ts. So I modeled all of this in this seven foot piece of pipe. Mm -hmm. And it's as simple as, as going down here and clicking on add fitting and then telling the program how many T's you want to add, how many elbows you want to add, how many valves you want to add. And then after you do this, it's going to ask you, well, what, what type of valve do you want? What type of T do you want? Turn loss, run loss, what type of elbow do you want? And unfortunately, you have to do this by, you can only select one time. So if I add 
eight elbows, but I only want four of them to be 90s, I should only add four at a time. Do the nine, four 90s first, and then four 45s after this step. And I'm telling the program to utilize the standard loss. So these standard losses, that's coming straight from the NFP 13 table for these fittings based on this pipe diameter um, and ID, for, but, you know, based on the material. You have the ability, if, if you want to, to come in here and specify a very specific equivalent length um, or pressure loss per fitting and per valve if you want. Um, what about if there's um, like a hose valve or say like um, there's going to be a new hydrant being installed closer to the riser room? Would you be able to incorporate that in, in somewhere along this line here or? As far as to be able to um, apply a, a hose allowance at that hydrant? Yeah, a hose stream of like 250 or whatever. That's a great question. Um, I don't... Could you just maybe just tee off of that pipe there and add it in? Or would it, would it take that into account? Or no? Well, potentially you could. Um, but I mean, but... it's a certain down the line, right? So it might not be accurate. Well, so what, what you could do something... Uh, let me get this thing off at the right direction here. That's totally not the right direction. This thing's all cockeyed 30 degrees, of course. Um, you, you could potentially... That worked a little bit better. Uh, sorry, let me get aligned here. So, you could theoretically... Uh, let me just do something like this. Let me shift this back here. Let me shift this over here. So you could potentially do something like this. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do this a couple of times, actually. I'm going to copy this back. And then connect the hydrant here. Where is my hydrant? Holy moly, would you look at the stem on that thing? Jeez, what am I doing to this thing? Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah, six sets looks good. So I'll drop that there. And then you could potentially put in, um, you know, your 250 or, or whatever you want to add, whatever hose allowance you want, and even set it to fixed flow based on remote area. And then when you select your remote area, which I don't have turned on, give me a second. Define my hydraulics. And now I have the ability to, instead of using this, I can apply a hose allowance at this hydrant and specify you know, whatever hose allowance I want there per remote area. So you could theoretically do that. Now, the one thing you're going to want to make sure of is that you don't have any of this stuff on. And this is going to take me a long time to go through and delete all of these. So I'm not going to delete all of them. Um, right. But you would want to certainly make sure that, you know, let's say that this is only 10 feet out, you would want to adjust this. Um, and then maybe only say, okay, this segment is only going to be 10 feet or maybe 20 feet. Adjust the fittings between the, this hydrant connection and your water entry, right. and then update everything, f you know, going back from, from the hydrant, you know, location where you want to, um, apply your outside hose allowance all the way back to your water supply. Then here, you know, you can adjust this to whatever it may be. You know, maybe that's 36 feet or something. And then again, you know, adjust all of the uh, fittings from this point back. So you could theoretically do something similar to this, and then just note that, you know, this segment, this is 10 feet. You know, here's where, you know, and I need to obviously generate uh, my, my node tag at my hydrant, which it's not doing. Huh, 
am I not getting my note tag there? I've got another hydraulic layer turned off. There we go. Well, I'm still not getting it. Where's my other hydraulic layer? I've got too many hydraulic layers in this drawing. <laughs> it's easy to, to lose track, that's for sure. Yeah, it is. Let me just turn everything on. Boom. Still missing that note tag. What in the world's going on here? Yep, I want to apply it there. This is an old drawing. I didn't have my settings updated. Yeah. I'm not getting that note tag. That's really irritating me. Huh. Well, I should be getting a note tag at the very least at this T, and I'm not sure why I'm not. Um, it's not applying this. No, I still got. I still have these overrides turned on for some of these. off that's on 100 for that one all right let's try this again I feel like this is related to my settings file I have some old uh, default properties in my settings file for this drawing that kind of wreaked havoc on my hose allowance calculations. I had I had set up all of my remote area default properties to use overrides, and uh, the program doesn't like that. So. It's still struggling to get me that hose allowance zero hose allowance at source I should be getting a hose allowance between these two points oh you know what I've got a check valve maybe. What do I have in here? Directional valves or something. I might need to delete all of these. Well, sorry, I don't want to take up any more time trying to correct my old drawing here, but I feel like I've part of my issue here is related to all, fittings. all the fittings, yeah, that I've got in yeah. here. Um, so anyway, you certainly there certainly is a way to accomplish what you're trying to do without having to draw an extensive underground system. Um, so in addition to being able to apply an elevation loss, you can adjust the over the total length of the the pipe as well as any fittings and valves. And then theoretically, you should be able to also include and incorporate um, a hydrant to apply outside hose allowance at this location. Okay. As Cal, I wonder if I just do this. Well, it might be actually. I should just add this, but I don't know if it's looking for a minimum pressure value. If it's running into an issue with this zero K factor. Um, the one thing to keep in mind, though, if you take this approach when you don't apply an outside hose allowance at the supply ball, mm -hmm. you will never get. You'll never get the hose allowance leg coming off of your system demand line because the program is it's it's going to apply this hose allowance at this point before it gets back to this location does that make sense 
So if you don't, if you add the the hose allowance was liable, you say you it, then the you need? get this then you get this little leg here. Right. Okay. If you don't apply it at the source, the program adds the flow upstream of the calculation termination point. So then it carries this additional flow back to the termination point. And so when the program graphs the demand at the supply location, it's already including the outside hose stream. Right. It also is not necessarily going to populate this outside hose demand 250 because we're manually applying that at a specific location. So again, rather than applying this at the source, we're applying it downstream of the source. Mm -hmm. So just something to be aware of. Okay. Hmm. All right. Yeah, I had a utility background that I brought in and just kind of drew the pipe from there. So I, I didn't know if there was a slope pipe dem uh, command or something that, that did it, if there was a way of doing it that way. So for me, putting the... Uh, Putting the uh, the benchmark at a certain spot and then having it slope a certain amount of feet to a different spot by highlighting the pipe or something. That's what I was thinking. Oh yeah, already. absolutely. Sorry, I didn't I didn't understand the question fully. Um, so yeah, if you've already got the pipe drawn in, um, if you basically you traced over a civil layout for the underground system, um, yeah. you can absolutely place your benchmark at one location or the other. Right click on the pipe, select slope pipe. And then you can tell it how many. Now, this doesn't give you the ability to say, okay, I want to gain 30 feet across the entire length of this. You're going to have yeah. to give it, specify a slope. Um, this is where I kind of got stuck. I was like, well, how can I manipulate this part to show that? But I didn't, I thought this is more for like dry systems. So I didn't, I didn't kind of moved away from it. It kind of is. I mean, yeah, it's it's the slope pipe was kind of intended more for dry systems and, and drainage slopes um, than than for underground. But if you know if you've got a nice even incremental length, excuse me, and you know what elevation you need to gain or lose over that total length, then then by all means, you could use that. Um, but again, that's only if you want to show a physical elevation change. Otherwise, you could select this and then just, you know, in here. Yeah. yeah, and my, my default properties are all messed up. So it's already drawn in all of these fittings and stuff. I got my defaults, apparently, um, which I shouldn't have done. But I, again, rather than physically elevating and sloping this pipe, you, you could simply leave it flat and then specify an elevation gain here. Okay. Yeah. But but again, it's gonna it's it's important to remember that it's applying that positive or negative elevation gain loss from start point to end point. Mm -hmm. And I guess that pipe would need also need to be at like uh, like a negative as well too, so that for smart pipes it indicates it as central iron rather than yes. Like for that. Yeah. Let me just run a cleanup yeah. intersection. Cross main, what elevation am I at here? Oh, I'm still way up in the air. Let me just lower this thing way down. There we go, and now run a cleanup intersection. And this pipe, yep, it changed to green. Now it's underground, DI class 52. And again, this is gonna be based upon whatever pipe group you've drawn this pipe in, mm -hmm. and whatever material that you've set in your override for underground. Right. So this is W group. If I wanted to do DI class 56 instead, make sure that's in my W group. It is. Run a cleanup intersection, and now this should be DI 56. Or I, could, I mean, you could even change it to underground PVC or something. HTPE underground 150 okay clean up intersection and now HTPE 150 so yeah, as long as it's below um, whatever z, z elevation you've set here you know and you could even set this to one foot if you wanted so then anything at zero would 
the smart pipe logic would change it to underground type pipe. Right. Okay. okay. So a couple of options you can use the slope pipe if you know um, if you've been able you know calculate the uh, elevation loss per a certain incremental value, or you can do the override and just apply a total elevation gain or loss to the entire length of pipe without having to physically manipulate and slope the pipe. Right. Yeah, that sounds like it's more logical. Yeah, I, I would agree. But again, just make sure if you've got multiple segments, you know, that, that you're applying the appropriate um, gain or loss appropriately to each segment. And sometimes, depending on how extensive your underground, how many segments you got, sometimes that can get confusing. Um, I feel like I've maybe in the past taken the approach of just, you know, the, the longest segment, apply the elevation gain loss to that particular segment. And if you're not changing pipe type or flow direction where you're, where you're you know, would require a hydraulic reference point, then that elevation gain or loss that you apply to a specific segment is going to apply to that entire path. So you might have a path from your, your underground flange at your lead-in all the mm -hmm. way back to your water supply because the pipe type is exactly the same. We're not changing the ID. We're not changing the flow direction. And yeah. you can apply an elevation gain or loss to one segment, and that will apply to that entire path. Yeah, we basically got the flow test stuff from the engineers, and they referenced that on there where there was a 38-foot um, elevation change from from the, where they did the flow, from where they did the flow test to the to the existing underground. So gotcha. They, but they're putting in something new in the underground, so they, I guess they taking that into consideration. I guess so. Just trying to get something accurate as well too. Fair enough. Yep. All right. Thank you for your time. You are very welcome, sir. <laughs>